All right, we've got a couple homework problems coming up. 201 and 2 are due on uh, Wednesday. Also had a question about the direction of the shear. Um, all right, now just to start on, let's say 191, which is one I just turned back. I'll, for those of you online, I'll try and grade that here pretty quick. Um, so what you do is you just run the formula for whatever angle you're interested in. So this is just 191, for example. Um, and there's the standard shear formula. So what we're doing there is, let's say we want to know what the shear is on plane AB, which is marked there with a little bit of a line. Um, what you would do is you would look at the angle for AB, which in this case is 60 degrees. So you would plug 60 degrees into the formula. And of course, the formula takes two times whatever the angle is, so that would be 120. So you got sigma x is negative 18,000. Sigma y in this case is negative 4,000. Tau xy, which is the shear on the vertical plane, would rotate that element counterclockwise. So that's a positive 2,000 there. So that, that's what all goes into that formula. This is the standard shear formula. So when you plug all that stuff in, what you get is a positive 5,062. So what that means is the shear on that 60 degree plane, which is plane AB, is positive because the shear comes out positive when you plug it into this formula. So what that means is the shear on this plane that I'm marking right now, um, that will, that's positive, that will take that element and if you attach it in the center with a nail or something to the wall, it would rotate the element counterclockwise. So the shear on the 60 degree plane, which is plane AB, would rotate that uh, square element there counterclockwise. So that, that's how you get the shear on there in the proper direction. Okay. So, good with that. Okay. Um, now, I don't know, we could go over one or the other of these. I've got 202 kind of ready to go, but we could do 201 also. I mean, whatever. Doesn't matter. Oh, like on 201 or two? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, we, we, I could address that. I, yeah. Um, all right, why don't, we, why don't we just look at 202 and we'll just run through that. So whenever you're doing this biaxial stuff, the first thing you want to do is, is write down sigma x, sigma y, tau xy. Okay, so for 202, they're positive 60 for sigma x, positive 20 for sigma y, and as it turns out, positive 15 for tau xy. Now, once you have that stuff, you can find the stress at any angle you want. In the previous problems that I just turned back, 191 and 2, you were given the angle. The problem was to find the stress at this particular angle. But the other thing you can do with this is you can find the biggest stress. And the way to find that is to first find the angle at which it acts. And there's a formula to find the angle at which it acts, which is this tangent 2 theta formula. All right, so you apply this formula here and using that, you can find the angle at which the largest normal stress acts. Okay. So, so that's what this formula gets you. And so that's formula 27. So when you plug the numbers into formula 27, you get the tangent of 2 theta is 0.75. So 2 theta 1 is 36.87. Half of that's 18.43. If you add 90 to that, you'll get the angle for the other principal stress, and that's 108.43. And then you double that, because that's what you put into the formula, and that's 216.86. So what you now have are the angles at which the two principal stresses act, 18.43 and 108.43. So what you can then do is determine the um, stress at that particular angle because you know that's the angle at which the maximum stress acts. So you got this information up here for the 
sigma and tau xy, sigma x, sigma y, tau xy, and now you know the angle. So you can plug that into the general formula for normal stress, and that's equation 25. Plug that in, run the numbers, and what you'll get is that the normal stress at 18.43 degrees is 65 megapascals. Okay. And that's either the uh, maximum or minimum normal stress. I would assume it's the maximum because it's bigger than the 60 that's applied here, so I would assume that's sigma max, sigma one. Okay. All right, so that gets you the first one. Now, to get the second one, again, you got two options. You can plug the second angle, the 10843, into this formula here, or you can use that shortcut formula. You could do either thing you want. Okay. So I did them both. You don't have to do both, but uh, you know I'm just doing them both just to show both ways of doing it. So I plug in the 10843 into that formula, and I get sigma min, or sigma 2, is 15. I could also have found that by taking sigma x plus sigma y is sigma 1 plus sigma 2, because I know sigma 1. So sigma x is 60, sigma y is 20, sigma 1 is 65, so that means sigma 2 is 15. So what I got now is I got the biggest normal stress, which happens to be sigma 1, and it's 65, and I got the smallest, which is 15. And I know the angles at which they act. So what I could do then, if I wanted, would be to draw up a sketch. And that's what I'd like you to do. And, and there's the sketch for the principal normal stresses right there. So at the 18.4 degrees, you've got 65 megapascals tension. 90 degrees off of that, you got 15. There's no shear on the uh, principal planes. So the shear on that left-hand sketch is zero. So are we good with that? Doing all right? All right. Now we're also interested in the biggest shear, okay? So the shear acts 40, the maximum shear in plane acts 45 degrees off of the principal planes. So if I take one of those principal angles, 18.43, and add 45 to it, I get 63.43. Double that up, and I get 126.86. So what I can then do is take um, the 126.86 and plug it into the general shear formula. Now that's formula 26. Now there's also a formula 29 that is for the maximum tau max. And I don't use that because it's just a plus or minus radical. What that formula is that would get me the same number as that I'm about to get, that's formula 29. So equation 29. And what that is is plus or minus the square root of sigma x minus sigma y over 2 quantity squared. plus tau xy squared, okay? Now, I don't use that because I don't know which one acts on which plane. So my preference, if I want to draw up a sketch, is to find the angle, which is 64.43, then plug it into equation 26. That's how I like to do that, because it gets me a specific stress at a specific angle. So when I plug in the 63.43 double 126.86, I plug that in there, run the numbers, I get negative 25. I get a sign on it. And that way I know that the shear on the 100, on the 63.43 degree plane is negative. This other equation is quicker, but the problem is, is I don't know how to draw up a sketch when I use it. So that's why I use this method here. So what I get there is that the shear uh, on the 108, or excuse me, I keep saying that, the, the shear on the 63.43 degree plane is negative 25, and that's the maximum in-plane shear. I also know on those planes, it's the average normal stress that acts, and that's 40. 
So given that, I can draw up a sketch. Okay. And the sketch would look like that. So there's the 63.43 degree plane right there. And so I draw the shear on that negative so that it will cause that element to rotate clockwise about a point about its center there. Okay. Does that cover your question? Okay. Right. And then once I've got one drawn, I know the other one meets in the corners with the arrowheads and that the other two shears meet at the opposite corner. And then also I know that every normal stress on all four of those planes is 40, the average normal stress. So, so I can get that figured up and drawn up. Um, and that's, uh, that's for in-plane, the maximum normal stress, sigma max, the most positive one, you might say. The, the, the minimum one, which is, you might say is the most negative, which actually turns out to be positive 15. That's the smallest normal stress. And then the biggest in-plane shear. Now the last little bit of this is to figure out what do I have to design this thing for for shear. And you can use that plus or minus sigma max minus sigma min over two formula for that. If you're staying in plane, sigma max is 65, sigma min is positive 15. So 65 minus 15 over two, and it'll be a plus or minus, it's 25. Now, you also always want to be sure to check the out of plane. To do that, you take the numerically larger of your two principal stresses. So it, it doesn't matter what the sign is. So you're just thinking absolute values there. So my biggest one numerically is 65. But instead of putting 15 in here, which is the in plane minimum normal stress, you put zero in because that's sigma z. Okay. So you take 65 minus 0 over 2, you get 32 and a half. That one governs, okay? So if you're looking at the absolute maximum shear that's going to happen in here, which you want to know because that's what you designed for, it's going to be 32 and a half. Okay. So you always want to be sure to check that. So, we good with that? All right. okay. So there are the answers on that. So sigma 1, let's look at the sketch here first. So, see there's the sketch for um, the shear stresses in plane. When we talk about the out of plane shear stress, you have to remember that if this is a plate that has a thickness to it, what you're looking at then for out of plane would be a kind of a crack going 45 degrees across that edge. Okay, because you're kind of looking, um, so what you're doing, and actually it might be better shown here. It might be the place to put it. Um, you're looking at a crack kind of going across like that. You're looking down that way and what you're seeing when you do that is a plane like that, and you've got 65 going that way, and then you've got zero doing that. So you're looking at a 45 degree crack going like that. Kind of like axially lo axial loading is what you're looking at there. All right. All right, so, so that's the deal with shear. So if you're going to fill that thing in, sigma 1 is 65 megapascals at 18.4 degrees. Sigma 2 is 15 megapascals at 108.4 degrees. Tau max in plane is plus or minus 25. That occurs at 63.4 degrees. The average normal stress is 40. And tau max absolute is plus or minus 32.5. That's, that's the numbers you fill in. Now, sometimes people get a little bit different subscripts than I do, and, and that's not a big issue. If you said, well, this is 15 megapascals, and this was 65, I, I couldn't argue with you. It's just, you know, what we're really finding here is the max and min normal stresses. But the one thing with that, if you wrote it down that way, you would need to change the angles. Okay. 
and that is because the 65 goes with the 18.4, okay, that they go together, okay? So if you do it like that or like that, that's fine. And then the uh, 15 goes with the 108.4. So you just gotta be sure that they're paired up properly, the proper stress with the proper angle. The one and two subscripts are arbitrary. They, they don't really matter which one you call one and which one you call two. But it is important that you got the right stress at the right angle. Okay. So we're doing all right with that. A little bit on biaxial there, right? Eh?